or you cannot avoid it. Yes. Okay. Can you hear me now? <laughs> now? Yes. <gasps> okay. <laughs> Do you know it's funny because, well, it's not funny, is it? But it's um, I'm surprised we've not had a technical glitch so far because things just <laughs> things just seem to go wrong. <coughs> randomly out of the blue on these things. Good morning. I'm so happy to be live with you this morning. It's such a different energy. Um, mine are still in bed. Even though it's like nine o'clock. We had a fairly late one last night, but not too bad. But my little one sleeps in quite well and she's had a late night. Am I, am I back? So did I just go off then? Or have I been coming off and on? What's the internet like? If it's no good, guys, if it's no good, what I'll do is I'll record it and then upload it, okay, if it's not working. If it's not working, I will keep going. But if it doesn't, I will record it separately and upload it. So don't worry, we've got this. It's quite a short one today anyway. But um, as always, with a couple of things that have come up through the um, chat, there's some things that I want to address this morning <laughs> just to help you. Now, one of the things I wanted to, to mention was, um, obviously I've replied to some of the messages there this morning, um, and I want to just kind of out the fact that sometimes things can really, really, um, can be really difficult things to move through and can be quite hard to shift your mood especially if you've had hurt from a loved one or someone really close to you and um, it's not easy um, and I've, I've just written some things down so I don't forget actually um, I want you to if you ever feel like really dire really really low I just want you to come back to that Louise Hay quote about basically that everything's working out out of the situation only good will come for the greatest and highest good of all all is well and so it is that's it that's it Ruth. you know it, it's going to come up and that's happening with with lots of people and i would rather that come up than we suppress it because what happens is if we don't allow that grief to come through it will find its way through into the body physically either energetically or um you know, manifesting to pain or whichever that is. So it's really important that when we feel the feels, we try to sit with that discomfort instead of trying to suppress it or instead of trying to push it away. So there's two levels that we work with. There's the shifting the mood and coming back up the spiral. And then there's working with things on a deeper level. So one of the examples this morning um, was about... Um, when you feel like you're giving too much to people, and I think that a lot of us relate to that, and um, there was a really great re um, reply, if you want to have a read through, about shifting the mood, about it's really, being, it's really nice to being needed. However, side, if you're giving too much to somebody and where that line is, and that comes through the pain itself, that comes through the, the frustration, the overwhelm, there's just feeling like you can't breathe. Um, shifting the thought is the beginning. 
then you go right okay well what is okay for me then you reset your boundaries and that you sometimes get a lot of pushback from people that are used to you giving quite a lot and that can be quite difficult at first and that's when you come back to these power statements that really work for you that's what we're going to be embedding tomorrow so I'm kind of rolling into two different kind of tasks today but I'll come on to that so um the, the whole thing that we're doing this week is a journey. There is no deadline. It's a process. Some of you will be going through some deep stuff. Some of you will be bringing some stuff out from the past that's always going to be coming up. <coughs> so it's, a, it's not about a deadline. It's not about getting somewhere by the end of the week. It's about having that shift of perspective, which a lot of you have already had. So that's what's amazing. And whatever the situation, so if it is somebody or something close, whatever the outcome, just remind yourself that it's all working out for the greatest and highest good of all and stick with that faith and stick with that trust even when you're in the trenches of a situation that's really really hard and really difficult and eventually what will happen is coming back to those five steps is that you'll keep going through that cycle and it'll get lighter and lighter even when you're going through something really tough you'll be able to step back and be the watcher so you'll have yourself that's feeling the feels and that's, you know, overthinking and doing all this stuff. And you'll have that version of yourself, that higher self that's watching it all with a neutral perspective. That version of yourself can still feel joy and can still feel light and can still feel love while simultaneously feeling these feelings. And that is part of the spiritual journey and the path. So what I've put in my notes here is that actually the only way we reach that feeling a little bit more light is through a lot of the pain it is isn't it you can look back through your life and go whoa going through that changed me on some level and again it's on that subtle level isn't it so it's that whole shining the light on the dark for it to become light in the first place for it to not have those shadows and going yes this is what I'm feeling and without judging any thoughts that you're having you know without saying that I'm a bad person because I'm having these thoughts or whichever it's shining that light and then bringing it forth and that's that step one isn't it the awareness step two if you want to go deeper with it you explore the whys step three is that okay it's because of this that and the other and the blame step four is then drawing that line of stands taking responsibility and going well I don't have to feel like that anymore and then step five is applying those different techniques and tools that work for you at different times, maintaining it for the next cycle that comes. But when the next cycle comes, you're already stronger and wiser. OK, you never go back to the beginning. Remember that progress. You never go. You might feel like you did and you go back sometimes, but you'll never go back to the beginning because you know too much. So that's the wisdom that develops over time. So sometimes when you're really in the trenches, this has worked for me before as well when I've gone through some um, heavy stuff um, last year is to step back again step back again and just if you can say it out loud to yourself or write it down I'm so grateful for this lesson this right now that I'm going through I'm so grateful for this situation to come up as hard as it is to continue my deep healing I'm so thankful for what I'm going through because I know at the end of this that there's always a rainbow after the storm always so if you can get back to that place where you're in it but you already know through your wisdom that something beautiful is going to come as a result of going through this then it's help while you're in it and as I said the other day it's one of the hardest things so what I've put here is um just coming back to some of the tips that I'd said the other day is when you're feeling at the bottom of the bottom is do that one act of kindness um really really small thing okay so I want to really highlight the difference between doing something because it feels good to the other person and to yourself versus doing something out of people pleasing because you've got something within you that you need to work on to stop doing that or boundary or the martyrdom so like oh I'm gonna have to help blah blah because this this and the other one really you're actually hurting yourself and three only doing it as a distraction technique keeping yourself busy helping other people 
it is really hard. Those three, people pleasing, martyrdom, or distracting yourself, it is so easy to do that because on the surface, it feels like, well, I'm helping and I'm doing good. So therefore, I'll just keep doing it. But we're really, all we're continuing to do is to not face our fears. And the only way through it is facing them. And that's what I'm so proud of you all for doing because you're looking at it and going, oh my God, I'm feeling like this. And oh my gosh, this is bringing up this for me or that for me. And um, that, that is how we work through it. And as I said to you, any time that you feel you want to share, you know, directly with me through email or whichever, that is what I'm here for. Um, and the fear of the fear is often worse than the fear itself. Another little technique I've got for you is chasing that fear in terms of what is the worst that can happen? And I know sometimes we're like, but we're not supposed to think like that. We're supposed to be like, let's stay positive. But sometimes it's worth exploring it and really going through and going, okay, well, this could happen or that could happen or this could happen. Da, 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 da. And it usually ends in something catastrophic, right? But then you come back to yourself and you're like, okay, can I work through that? And the answer will be yes, because you've worked through really difficult times already. So sometimes it's worth doing that. And then my other one, of course, is what today is actually genuinely all about, which is we've spoken a little bit about shifting the subtleties of the mind. We've spoken a little bit about sometimes we need to go even deeper to look at our past trauma or our triggers or red flags and things like this, which is, you know, obviously going a little bit more into the subconscious. And how far you go with that is all up to you. Sometimes it is just a subtle shift. It's a 2D level. And it's just an affirmation that will fix it. A subtle I'm just pausing there because I froze. I saw that. I'm back. I'm going to wait until the internet just clears. Okay, I'm back. So today is working with how to start the day off, okay? So sometimes we can work with ourselves through the day and we've looked at those tips now. But what I want to start off with now is how do we start the day and how do we end the day? Now, this can be as long or as short as you would like it to be. The long version I am posting as a separate video here in the group and on the website for you to look back to its morning intentions. So if you want a really deep meditation, go for that one. I've written it all down as well, how to do this. But the morning kind of ritual, okay, and this is the task. It's deciding what is that one thing that you can do in the morning that will really shape your morning. It doesn't have to be huge, okay. Now, I do miracle mornings, so I get up before my little girl every morning, um, and I do my meditation. I then do gratitude. Sometimes I do what I'm proud of instead if I'm not feeling that place of gratitude. And then bring the gratitude in. I do my affirmations, um, a journal. I then do five minutes reading um, and so on. Sometimes I do some movements. Now that's all within half an hour. I can do that, all that really quick. I don't always do that. Sometimes I'll just do what I call my cleanse, tone and protect. And I'll come on to that one. It doesn't have to be like, right, I'll go for a run every morning or I'll do yoga every morning. It could just be that you set your intention for the day, okay? Or it could just be that you, um, you make sure you have a nice slow morning if you can, or, or whatever it is. So the task for today is you can either decide what is that one thing that you'll do every morning, or what is the one step you can take today? So we're getting a little bit more proactive in the outer world. We've done quite a lot with our inner world. So now we're going, what's that one thing? Now I've already seen many people doing stuff already without us even getting here it's amazing so things the ball is already rolling right so what is the one thing that will shift you today is it an act of kindness is it deciding what your morning thing is or is it that you're going to take that walk pick one okay one thing and one thing every day until you start to build the momentum don't be tempted to overwhelm yourself with doing big lists of things that you're now going to do going forward I, I do that too and it's not helpful because if you don't achieve them then you just beat up on yourself so while you're feeling delicate and you're bringing up your mood you want to start with one thing now if that leads to something else fantastic go for it but don't have the intention okay just have the intention of doing one amazing thing today that you're proud of by the end of today 
then when you get into bed, you can say, I'm proud of myself and that will help you sleep, okay? And then you might even scan through the day and go, actually, I'm proud of myself for this too and this and this, okay? But that one thing will keep you going for the day and you'll be like, yes, keep it small, keep it subtle. Now I'm gonna quickly run through my morning routine with you, the morning um, cleanse, torn and protect. This is something that you can do either in your bed. So if you're just not feeling really lethargic and you're struggling to get up, you can do it physically in your bed or you can do it in the shower itself. So it's kind of like a visualization of, um, first of all, checking in with yourself. This is what we did on day one. How am I feeling today? Are I feeling tearful or I'm feeling um, really breathing or I'm feeling really flat or really angry, whatever that is, honoring that, okay? That is the stuff that's coming up to show you something. So we're shifting it in the morning to get us up and to get us going. And then later you can process or you can journal. You can even journal in that moment, but it's two different things. It's that shifting of the mindset to keep yourself up, going and get yourself motivated and to rewire your regular daily thoughts. And at the same time, looking and going, okay, let me contemplate on that a little bit. So you acknowledge what you're feeling. That's the things you want to cleanse. Okay, I'm going to cleanse that away. I'm just going to cleanse it away. So you're either cleansing it through the shower or you're imagining yourself through the shower or just like blowing it all away. Then, tone. So what do I want to feel today? And this is where you can be, you can be either really strong and powerful with that or you can just be more realistic and go, well, I want to feel hopeful. I want to feel willing today. I want to feel proud today or whatever that is. And then again, through your system. And then third is tone. So the toning is setting that bubble around yourself, filling yourself with that energy, that positive energy, scanning through your body, like we did on day two, that little meditation, and going, right, okay, this is who I am, and I'm not going to let anybody infiltrate that. These are my boundaries. Boundaries is a whole other subject. So cleanse, tone, and protect is something that you can do when you start your day. And right at the end of the day, you can even do a little bit of a cleanse as well, energetically of what people around you and just remind yourself of how proud you are. So that leads us into um, the task. So as I said, the task um, is to decide what that one thing will be today. But I'm kind of leading you a little bit into day six tomorrow. So I'll be posting the task in the morning so that you're ready for tomorrow night. So tomorrow night we'll do the live it would be um, the deep meditation. And this is where I would like you to tell me those deep and powerful mantras, statements, affirmations. So these are the ones that are really strong. It's like, I am loved. I am lovable. I am enough. This is that whole, you know, I am, you know, doing the best I can. I am healing. These strong ones. And you can send me as many as you would like. I will read them all out during um, the meditation but all I'm asking you for is your one power affirmation it might be the same one that you use every time you do something like this or you may never have done something like this before you may need my help with that either way it's just deciding like what is this what is it that I want to feel it could even be a part of your transformation statement itself okay it's all up to you for the task all I'm asking for is one that you give me as many as you would like and I will embed them into the meditation tomorrow night. And I'll obviously send a little post with a reminder of what that task is as well. So there we are today. So a little kind of closing remark really is whatever you're feeling today, you can always start afresh tomorrow. Sometimes it's just about going, you know what, today is a shitty day, right? I'm feeling shitty and I'm not able to shift it. And that is just sometimes how it goes, yeah? But on the days that you can, you've got those tools. Be proud of yourself anyway. Be proud because you're already on the journey. You're already doing the work. And part of the work is accepting that sometimes you have days like that. So I applaud you. Well done for being here. Well done for showing up for yourself. You're on it. Keep the faith. Love you a lot. And I will see you tomorrow night. Bye, everyone. Sunshine.